What's up everybody, it's Jay here and today I wanted to go over what the right data science job and role would be for you. To be honest, there's a lot of different kinds of jobs out there within the data science umbrella. And today we're gonna to go over each single one of them and we're gonna frame it in the context of a fictional company in which we're gonna go through every single position and the responsibility for this fictional startup. Now today I chose a fictional startup called Real Estate Startup Co. Now how I'm gonna frame it is to go through the full data science stack of a real estate startup. And let's just say that this real estate startup is like Open Door, in which they have to buy and flip houses. So today we're gonna go through each position and how it relates to the startup and what the day-to-day -day position would be like. And you could see if this kind of role is something that you would enjoy when you're choosing a data science path or you're just getting started in choosing a data science path to fall under. So let's jump into it. Let's say that you're the CEO of this company. Your job is to create a business that buys and sells houses. And generally in the past two years, Side note, this was pretty lucrative because Open Door IPO'd, but sadly the real estate market has now tanked. Well, the core value prop that you're doing is you're trying to buy homes and resell them for more. Right? And so the first thing that you have to do is you have to employ a data analyst to actually do the research to find a city or a market for you to enter into to isolate the housing market and buy and sell homes in that area. For example, the data analyst's job in this situation is then required to go through every single city in the United States, analyze the liquidity of the housing market, analyze the average prices of the homes and how long they're on for, and which cities are the best in terms of growing population in which you can buy a house for cheaper and then potentially sell it for more in a few months or even quicker in a few days. So as you can see, the data analyst job here is really to do a lot of that on the ground research. They're doing a lot of modeling. They're kind of basically working within different kinds of data sets. And this would be the right role for you if you enjoy this kind of scripting and analysis work while not actually having to depend on and write production code. So you're not actually building any sort of models right now that are actually going to production, but you're just doing that research of analyzing the data and providing some recommendations for the CEO. A lot of this also includes having an analytical background, asking questions that are focused on long-term outcome and reporting, analyzing, and diving into the data. All right, so now let's say that the data analyst has chosen a city, let's say Phoenix, Arizona, as a spot to jump into. We've done all the analysis, we've presented to the CEO, the CEO is like, great. Let's do it. Now our problem shifts to building a model for predicting the value of a home and finding undervalued homes to buy. To build this model, we're gonna need a lot of data on everything. We're gonna need building permit data. We're gonna need historical prices on previous home sales in order to value the home. We're gonna need to understand the quality of the school districts. So there's a ton of data that comes in and it's gonna need an ingestion pipeline. So you can kind of get what I'm saying here when we're gonna need a data engineer to scrape the data, ingest it through different APIs and put it into a structured database warehouse. All of this data also has to be merged in a cohesive manner for then a machine learning engineer or a regular engineer to then start building the model. So the data engineer's job is to really set up the initial architecture of the data warehouse. We have to make sure that we're scraping data from a pipeline into the data warehouse. At the same time, we have to make sure that it's flexible so that we can scale it out for other cities in the future. At the very end of the day, we have to make sure that all the data is cleaned and properly formatted so that the end user, which is gonna be the data scientist or the ML engineer can come in and be able to take that data and use it for their purposes. Lastly, the data engineer is also gonna be responsible for maintaining the underlying data architecture that's gonna be serving the client facing app that users are gonna be using Using when they're looking to sell their homes. So if we look at the strengths and weaknesses of the data engineering job from that example, we can see that data engineers are essentially software engineers by trade that essentially just focus on data. They're responsible for compiling and installing database systems, writing complex queries and scaling to multiple machines, especially when the amount of data ingestion is gonna be really large. If you think about it, if we're ingesting all this home real estate data, it's gonna be a lot of data to process on a daily transaction volume basis. All of these require requirements and understanding of the end user, basically how much data is gonna be used, who's gonna be using the data, if it's gonna be data analysts, if it's gonna be machine learning engineers, and then at the end of the day, making sure it scales up for the future. If you're a type of person who likes putting different pieces into place, making sure the integrity of different models are right and designing and architecting large systems, similarly to almost like planning a city in SimCity, then data engineering might be the job for you. Weaknesses side, sometimes it can can get a little monotonous because you're working within only databases and data engineering systems. At the same time, a lot of people want to work on different sorts of parts of the website that 
they can't, such as the front end or the back end potentially. Also, your end user many times is going to be internally facing, which means that you're not going to be seeing as much of the business side. If you're interested in this, data engineering is still exploding. As you might realize, this role is required for any of these other roles to kind of start. So let me know if you guys think data engineering is exciting. Let's say that we have all this raw data now. The data engineer has done their job. They've built the pipeline. It's now into our system. Now it's time to hire an applied scientist or a research scientist to go build our customized model. When you hear applied scientist, right, you think of someone who's particularly skilled in data science or research. This role is extremely important because we have to build a model that basically buys and sells homes, right? So we have to find undervalued homes. So even gaining a 1% accuracy here could be tens of thousands of dollars of an edge for the business. Applied and research scientists have to take the existing data and transform it into thousands of different kinds of columns and data points for them to understand to be able to tune these models for the best kind of accuracy. Once they build the initial version of the model, they have have to work with machine learning engineers to get it deployed. And on top of that, they have to be able to improve the model over time because they have to take in that data that the model has outputted, look at it against the actual real values and figure out ways to tune the model so it becomes more accurate. And this is a role that's really important when companies are built off of data science. And what does that mean? That means is if companies actually use machine learning in their actual product. So think about a job search recommender, right? Or a dating app, right? Where we're basically, our job is to basically match users to jobs or users to other dates. And it's extremely important to get that right, which is why the company uses machine learning for it. So whenever you can track the value of a company based on how good its machine learning model is, that's where you're really gonna need research scientists and applied scientists. Now, some strengths for this role are the fact that research scientists and applied scientists generally are extremely technical. They know the ins and outs of every single kind of new state of the art machine learning model. Model. On the flip side, there's not a lot of these people out there and generally they need a lot of background and experience such as having a PhD studying the different kinds of algorithms in academia. Also, it's a huge focus on algorithms and theory. So you can expect a lot of elite code in the interview because you're supposed to be a person who's really, really good at algorithms. At the same time, you have to understand that your end user and that your client is gonna be engineering. So you're gonna be working completely on engineering. You might have some sort of business focus for your model but at the same time at the end of the day, you're gonna be working within the engineering teams. All right, and this kind of perfectly segues to our next role, which is the person that has to get your model into production, and that's the machine learning engineers. And the machine learning engineers have been, you know, part of the hottest role in the past few years because of the fact that they are extremely important, mostly because they actually glue this all together, right? They take the model from conception, from the applied research scientists, and they actually deploy it onto the web. So if we're taking our real estate analogy even further, Further. They're basically working with applied scientists to actually get this model into real time usage so that any user could go to the website and immediately get a quote for how much that their house could be sold for. And that requires a machine learning engineer to actually build this into an app because if a research scientist did it, they would basically just build it into an existing system without being online. The machine learning engineer also has to worry about performance, right? So specifically, this means if a user has to go in and enter in their address and it takes them 10 minutes minutes to get a quote back, that's a horrible user experience. The pros about this job are that one, it's easily translates over from software engineering. If you're a software engineer, you can transition to machine learning engineering by just working on machine learning projects at your company. And a lot of the times, this is the easiest path to doing so. At the same time, some of the cons are related to the research science role in which you're working within an engineering team strictly. You might be working with data scientists, but in the end, you're not really that business facing. Now up to a fully functioning app. So we're basically done, right? Everything Everything's good, the model's built, everything's working. Not so fast, actually. So the CEO actually has no idea what's going on. They built this business, they got the whole team together, they deployed the app, and yet he has a zero insight into what's actually happening. It's pretty clear that the CEO needs a dashboard. And the person to build that dashboard is a business intelligence engineer or a BI analyst. The BI engineer is responsible for understanding what metrics the CEO needs to see without the CEO asking for it. For example, how many new houses are we buying every single day? How many new houses are we selling? How many offers are we getting from our users? How many users do we have? All of this needs to be displayed for the CEO and executive team, and it has to be done by a BI engineer. Now, the BI engineer also at the same time has to be able to build the aggregate queries underneath the hood in the database so that these dashboards aren't super slow. Because if you think about it, we have thousands of data points, maybe even millions, 
and running queries on that could be pretty slow in real time. And lastly, there's nothing that ticks off a CEO more than incorrect data. The BI engineer has to make sure that the quality of the data is correct and work with the data engineers on that. Strengths and weaknesses of this BI engineer role, right? The role of the BI engineer is to work on reporting and metrics to build dashboards for end users, including the executive team and other members on their team. And ultimately, it's about understanding what needs to be put on the dashboard without anyone asking the BI engineer to do so. So it's a lot of kind of business metrics and product facing work as well. On the con side, it's a lot of specific pipe line and SQL debugging. Now, I would say that it's not the funnest work at the end of the day when you're going into SQL and you're writing queries every single day. So a lot of the times it can be kind of a SQL monkey type job. Now, speaking of ticking off the CEO with incorrect data, the CEO is pretty furious at this point because they don't think that the company is growing fast enough. You can imagine the CEO is looking at the growth charts of Opendoor and Zillow and shouting at people in the other room. The CEO doesn't understand why can't they grow fast faster than these other companies. Additionally, it probably doesn't make sense that our data science team that's working on the model is now supposed to be presenting results for marketing at the same time. A bunch of team members on the data team are complaining about marketing keeps on sending them requests and asking them for queries like select all from users or select all from customers. Now you realize it's time to hire a business analyst. Now, what does a business analyst do? Business analyst is a designated data person that basically sits on the business facing teams. Their job is to translate business problems into technical solutions, as well as be able to pull data using SQL to give those insights back into their teams as well. Business analysts basically sits in between business teams and tech teams, and they work on scoping out projects, working with project management tools, and coming up with requirements as well. In general, business analysts are pretty similar to data analysts, but they're much more business facing, in which they probably sit more on the business teams than the data analysts do. At the same time, they're much more client facing potentially, but it is pretty interchangeable. All right, the CEO is still furious. Now realize that maybe anger is their baseline. The company has done amazing. It's expanded to five more cities, but there's bugs everywhere and conversion rates look awfully low for no reason at all. CEO wants to know what conversion metrics are in every single city. And they also wanna know if we should redo the entire signup flow. And this is where the product analyst shines because the product analyst basically works on projects directly related to the product that we're building. In this case, it would be an interface for users to buy and sell their homes. Their job is to actually produce insights that are related to the product to showcase to the CEO. They have to answer questions like, is it worth investing in changing our onboarding flow so that we can increase conversion rates? Where is it the bottleneck in a user's purchasing decision between buying and selling their homes? All of this is part of the core product and it's not the data analyst's job because they're reporting metrics and results and doing longer term outcome. And it's not the business analyst's job because they're focusing on the marketing and revenue teams and supporting them. So the product analyst is actually supporting the product teams. They do the exact same job of analytics, except for the product. All right, everything is going finally going to plan. We've got the entire data team covered, right? Not so fast. The CEO comes in and they're screaming about the fact that another competitor has raised $100 million. Now, what are we going to do? It's time to hire a growth marketing analyst. Now, what does a growth marketing analyst do? And is that just hype as well? Kind of is. But basically, all a growth marketing analyst does is they sit on the marketing team and they focus purely on marketing analytics and growth. Their metrics are completely tied to the growth of the business. This could be a number of new users. This could be in the number of amount of revenue that's been sold, but they use analytics and they use A-B testing and experimentation to do so. So for example, they could optimize the paid ads that are occurring for the real estate startup. We realize that maybe some of these ads are performing better than others. And so we boost those ads and we don't boost the others. And essentially a growth marketing analyst applies this to every fundamental part of the business when it comes to acquiring customers or making more revenue. They look at funnels and they apply these tweaks. We look at attribution and we try to understand where customers are coming from and where the conversion rates are higher. And then we double down on the ads that are actually working well. We basically get rid of the ads that aren't performing well. That's all that a growth marketing analyst does. If you follow to the end of this video, you realize that I haven't talked about data scientists, right? Where the hell are the data scientists? Well, in general, you realize that data scientists is a field that encompasses every single part of those individual positions and there's not really a term for it. There's not even a role and responsibility that the data scientist does. It actually does a little bit of each. And depending on what company you work for, they'll basically pigeonhole that data science role into one of those nine different positions that I just mentioned. 
It's kind of crazy how we've never really defined the data science role and I don't think we will have in the future. But all we really know is that data scientists make a lot of money and they work with data and a lot of times they should know a little bit of each part of that stack that I just went through. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please like and subscribe if it helped you understand exactly the day-to-day -day functionalities of each one of these data science roles. It's still kind of funny to me that there isn't really one data science role, but there's actually 10 of them. And I hope that understanding that then helps out with your career search and understanding what you want to do. Do you want to work in analytics? Do you want to work in business analytics? Do you want to work in growth marketing analytics? Do you want to work in machine learning engineering? It's all kind of green field and ready for you to explore. And let me know in the comments which one resonates the most with you specifically. And I'll catch you guys later on the next video. Thanks and bye.